a long, long time ago, possibly 2,600 years ago, possibly even 3,500 years ago, no one knows for sure, lived a man, or possibly more than one, known in Greek as Zoroaster. The religion that follows him, Zoroastrianism, was a major religion in the ancient world and still exists today, although less than 200,000 people still follow. It is quite possibly the first monotheist religion in the world and is the first major religion that can be called Gnostic. Gnosticism is a type of monotheism that also emphasizes dualism. There is, of course, a supreme, good, true, wise, and transcendent god, but also a near-equal or lesser god or godlike spirit that represents evil, falsehood, suffering, and disorder. It is widely agreed good will defeat evil handily, but there are requirements to achieve this, which are progressively revealed over time, and humans play a large role. There is also a heavy emphasis on sacred knowledge, which followers, and especially leaders, have access to that sets them apart, or at the very least means they are closer to the Most High God. The word Gnosticism is Greek and means having knowledge. Most Gnostics, including Zoroastrians, think the Earth and life is under assault, or controlled, or even created by the Lesser Evil One. The world is imperfect, or not real, or should be rejected as just material, again referred to as evil, and that something better exists elsewhere which could be enlightenment, or the source, or paradise. To recap, material world bad, spirit realm good, one evil worldly lesser god, one unfathomable supreme god, and a Gnostic achieves salvation by learning secret knowledge. Zoroastrians call God Ahura Mazda and the spirit of evil Angramanyu. There are also angels and demons, a flat earth with a dome for the heavens, an elaborate creation myth, and sacred girdles. Fire is especially important, and keeping with the dualism theme, so is water. Zoroastrians in India, who fled their escaping Islamic persecution, claim to have kept their sacred fire burning for 1,500 years. The sacred fire is fed five times a day as a prayer ritual, and you must wash three times before prayer. Their holy book is the Avesta, and their symbol is the Faravahar, or man in the wings. Three layers of wings symbolize good thoughts, words, and Three layers on the tail wing symbolize bad thoughts, words, and deeds. There is an emphasis on the individual's responsibility to choose. Man and woman have free will. For every good thing Ahura Mazda created, the evil Angramanyu created its counterpart, all except for humanity, who must join with the beneficial creatures to defeat the noxious miscreants of falsehood and evil, including cats. All souls must cross a bridge of judgment which leads to a sweet-scented beautiful girl in heaven beyond, or an old foul hag leading down a bridge which becomes as thin as a sword, the dark, isolated, putrid pit of hell awaits below. Punishments fit the crime, and hell is corrective, not forever, because when evil is finally defeated, salvation is universal. Good and evil will struggle for 3,000 years, which may or may not have already passed, at which time evil will make a final assault. The sun and moon go dark world falls into winter, and the most fearsome demon, Azidahaka, will terrorize the world. But Zoroastrians also believe in a coming messiah, so at the same time, a savior will be born to a virgin impregnated in a lake by the seed of Zoroaster himself. The savior defeats death by raising the dead for final judgment. The wicked are again sent to hell to be purged of sin. Everyone must wade through a river of molten metal in which the righteous will not burn. Heavenly forces finally defeat Angarmanyu, offer a bull as a final sacrifice for all time, and all humans become immortal. Mountains are flattened and valleys are filled up. The heavens and the earth will merge with the moon and all will be united with Ahura Mazda for eternity. 
The word magic comes from their knowledge of astronomy, and the three wise men, yes, those three wise men, or magi, were Zoroastrian priests. It was the official state religion of the ancient Achaemenid Empire, otherwise known as the Persians, which conquered most of the known world in the 5th century BCE. It's thought that about 50 million people, or 44% of the total human population at the time, would have lived in the Achaemenid Empire, the largest percentage ever under one rule. The Cyrus Cylinder, created after Cyrus the Great defeated Babylon in 539 BCE, sets out his genealogy as a king from a line of kings chosen by the chief Babylonian god Marduk to restore peace and order, welcomed by the people as their new ruler. It appeals to Marduk to protect and help Cyrus and his son, who would inherit the empire. From this and other sources, it's said that Cyrus the Great was tolerant of religious minorities. Religion during this time and long before was mostly polytheistic, although certain gods were thought of as superior to others by their followers. Each city or city-state had its own supreme god, many of them traced back to the Bronze Age. The god Inki and Enlil of the Sumerian cities Arudu and Nippur, the god Ashur and Ishtar of the Assyrian cities Ashur and Arbella, and the god Marduk of Babylon. In ancient Ugarit, in the land of Canaan, Two temples were built on the hill of the city, one for Dagon, a subterranean god of wheat and fertility, and one to Baal, the rider on the clouds, the god of the wind, rain, storms, and fertility. A tablet was found which depicted Baal with a bolt of lightning in his hands. To earn his temple, he beat the god of the sea to death with magic clubs. Baal is the son of El, which means God. And out of this land, the land of Canaan, emerged the people of Israel.